Well, hey there, church family. I hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to share a couple thoughts, kind of devotional thoughts here on election day. Um, it feels like the eyes of the world are zeroing in and watching what's happening here in the United States. And it feels like this year, as uh, more than any other election, that there are just a lot of even our own feelings and thoughts wrapped up in the outcome of this particular election. I know so many people uh, are deeply concerned uh, about the outcome of this particular election season. There's a lot of fear and worry and anxiety about it going this way or that way. There are lots of people who, um, who just have really deep feelings uh, about how this election should go. Um, and I don't want to diminish those things. I understand why people feel the way that they do. I have my own particular concerns uh, about the outcome of this election. Uh, so, so I don't want to diminish those in any way. I also don't want to, in any way to communicate that we shouldn't be a part of a process like this. Actually, I think that part of what it means to be a good citizen as a follower of Jesus is to do things that promote the welfare of the place where we live. And for us, that means participating in the election and voting. And so I think that that's great. I think that's something that we should do. That said, we have to make sure that we are reminded that our citizenship is primarily anchored in heaven and not in earth, not as a US citizen, uh, not as a citizen of Illinois, not as a citizen of your particular town, but that your primary place of belonging is within the family of God, anchored in heaven above. And what that means is that we look down on situations like this, an election, with a completely different set of lenses than the world around us. We know what Christ has done for us in his life, his death, and his resurrection. And we know that we have an anchor for our soul, this hope that is in Christ, that he's proven that he's trustworthy, he's proven that he's faithful, and he promises that he's going to make all things new. And so we know that the kingdom of God is advancing. We know that the gospel is moving forward. We know that the church and his people are moving from glory to glory. So it doesn't mean that we're indifferent to things like an election. It just means that our hope, our joy, our peace, uh, our sense of purpose and destiny is in no way tied to the particular outcome of an election. As a matter of fact, the church has often thrived the most in environments where it's been hostile to the gospel. So what that means is I am just not concerned um, about from a place of fear or doubt, and we should not be concerned uh, at that level about this election day. And what that means is that it frees us then to actually participate in a completely different kind of way that we don't have to approach an election day like this from a place of fear, from a place of having to really fight for something. And instead we get to adopt a completely different posture um, of hope, of freedom, of joy, of good news, of, procl of proclaiming the gospel, regardless of what happens in this outcome. Let me give you some particular handles around that because I know that might sound like it's really out there, but what does that actually mean? Well. And uh, in First Timothy, the Apostle Paul writes to young Timothy, and he, and he tells them in the second chapter, in, in, in chapter two, he says, I urge you, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be offered for all people. So Paul's saying of utmost importance, Timothy, the thing I want you to make sure that you pay attention to above all things is that you are a praying people. So for us today and during this election cycle and, and, and today in particular, we need to remember to pray for those who are going to the polls. We need to remember to pray for those who are filled with fear and worry and anxiety, uh, that God would comfort them, that their hope would not be anchored in the outcome of the election, but their hope would be anchored in Jesus. So we need to be praying for people, uh, and whether we agree with them, whether they're like us, whether they are, um, you know, they are kind of person who's distant from us. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The call for us is to pray for people. So today, I would encourage you to pick a few different people. Maybe it's family members. Maybe it's someone that you've been interacting with on social media. Uh, I want to encourage you. Just take a minute and just pray God's blessing and care over that person. Pray that they would come to know the love of Jesus if they don't already. Pray that the Lord would help them to seek his kingdom first above everything else. So take that opportunity to pray. 
Paul says secondly here in the next verse in verse two, he says that we pray specifically for kings and all those in authority. Basically, the people that we're looking at today, those elected officials, those who have governing power, we're supposed to pray for them. Our uh, posture as the people of God is to pray for those who God has sovereignly put in power. And regardless of whether we agree with them, whether we like them or not, it doesn't matter. Paul doesn't specify here. We're just supposed to pray for them. So today, as you're marking your ballots, as you're watching results come in, I want to encourage you to actually begin to pray for these elected officials or the people running. They have real families. They experience real pain. They have put a lot on the line and they need our prayers. They need our prayers just to get through this day. And then they're going to need our prayers in an ongoing way to govern well. We're supposed to pray for them, that they would govern well, that they would promote the peace and the prosperity of everywhere under their care. And that's where the uh, Apostle Paul goes, as, goes next. He says uh, that we should pray this so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So we're praying this in a, for a particular purpose. It's that these elected officials would actually promote a peaceful and quiet environment, basically that there wouldn't be a lot of political turmoil going on so that it's a hostile environment for us to live. So we're supposed to pray that they would govern well so that we have a peaceful and, a, and an environment that has a lack of turmoil. And then specifically, he leans into this idea of godliness and holiness. He's not necessarily having in mind here that everyone is a Christian, although that would be great, but that, but that the environment is not hostile to the gospel whenever possible. So we're praying that our elected officials would be able to govern with wisdom and understanding to promote the well-being and welfare of everyone under their care, and that that would be a good environment for the gospel to be able to grow. That's how we're meant to be able to pray. And Paul says the end game in all of this, he says this, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So there is some connection with us praying for people, with us praying for our elected officials, praying for the specific, uh, the specific kind of environment, and that people coming to know the, the love and knowing, uh, coming to know the love of Jesus. So the end game for Paul is not just that we pray for a good place to live, but that we pray that everyone who is in our sphere of influence, everyone who is a part of the place where we live, that those people would come to the knowledge of the truth. That is God's heart, it's his design, and it's his intention. And if we have any other agenda that is somehow going um, ahead of that agenda, of God's agenda of redeeming all of mankind, of letting every person know the redeeming love of God, then we've got to put that agenda on the shelf and pick up God's agenda. We should be praying that whatever happens on this election day, that people will come to know the love of Jesus. And he is so committed to that end. He is committed to people knowing him. He's committed to sharing his love. He's committed to the renewal of all things. So today, I just want to just have you take a step back from all the chaos and the madness surrounding the election. I want you to lean into your citizenship in heaven. And I want you to do that by praying for, for people, praying specifically for elected officials, and then praying in a way that we, that we believe that God wants every person to know him through what Jesus has done. So would you do that? Would you join me today in praying in those ways? God bless, and let's have a hopeful tomorrow.